Naomi Long, Mrs. Long. Mr. Speaker, I am rising um, to nominate my party leader, David Ford, for the, posi for the position of Justice Minister. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I have worked with David Ford for some considerable time in the Alliance Party and most recently and most closely as his deputy leader. During that time, I have witnessed David both as a person and a politician, and I know the calibre of person that I am rising to nominate. He has shown a consistent and deep-seated commitment to serving everyone in our community without fear or favour, and irrespective of religion, class, colour, nationality, gender, sexuality or disability. He is a man who has shown an innate sense of fairness and in his dealings with other people, both privately and publicly. As an individual, he is committed to making politics work in Northern Ireland for our people, and he is committed to being a constructive force in whatever role is entrusted to him. For those reasons, and for many others, I believe that David Ford is the right person to take on responsibility for such a sensitive issue as policing and justice, and that he can be trusted to act in the best interests of the whole community. Mr Speaker, I recognise that the SDLP and the Ulster Unionist Party had preferred candidates in Danny Kennedy and Alban McGuinness. I and my colleagues preferred David Ford. However, having had the opportunity to express their preference, Mr. Speaker, I would ask them to give consideration to giving their active support to David Ford here this morning by voting for him at this point, as we would have done were the order of these nominations reversed. <laughs> I, am pleased, I am pleased, Mr. Speaker, to be here to nominate David Ford for the post. Thank you. Order members, Mr. Ford has been nominated. Mr. Ford, do you accept the nomination? I accept the nomination, Mr. Speaker. Before proceeding to the question, I would remind the House that the Northern Ireland Act 1998 requires the resolution must be passed by parallel consent. The question is that Mr. Ford be Minister of Justice. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary of any, no. no. Clear the lobbies. The question will be put in three minutes. Order, order. I would ask the clerk to please read the result. 102 members voted, of which 69 voted aye, which is 67.6%. 42 nationalists voted, of which 26 voted aye, 61.9%. 51 unionists voted, of which 34 voted aye, 66.7%. Nine others voted, of which nine voted aye, 100%. The motion is therefore carried by parallel consent. The motion is carried. Order. Order. <laughs> Members, I will now order. Order. I will now ask Mr. Ford to affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office, which has already been read into the record of proceedings. Mr. Ford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. I now confirm that Mr Ford, having confirmed the terms of the Pledge of Office, has taken up office as Minister of Justice in accordance with the Northern Ireland Act 1998. And let me say I offer my congratulations uh, to Mr Ford, the new Minister, and invite him for a short address to the House. Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I not only thank you for calling me, but thank you and your staff for the efficient way in which these proceedings have been managed today. This is, I believe, a significant day for Northern Ireland. It is a step forward in the peace process, in the political process, and in ensuring that the institutions which have been in place since 1998 are firmly affixed and are playing their part in serving the needs of the people of Northern Ireland. Because this is not the completion of a process. The completion of a process will come when we see a devolved assembly and executive carrying out all its duties consistently well and in partnership for all the people of Northern Ireland. Today is but a staging post to that effect. And that is the, and that is, because what is important, Mr. Speaker, is that we have a process which sees delivery for the people of Northern Ireland, not a process which is regarded as a one-day event. That's why I and my colleagues spent a significant amount of time over recent months, before the Hillsborough talks at Hillsborough 
and since the Hillsborough talks in seeking to agree the policies which might help form a programme for government for the Department of Justice and ensuring that there was progress on building a shared future for all our people. Because we believed that it was absolutely vital to get those agreed in advance so that that delivery would be possible. And I want to publicly thank my Deputy Leader Naomi Long, not only for proposing me today, but for her role in those talks, alongside Stephen Farry, our Justice Spokesperson, and the other members of my team who have given such support in ensuring that we now have the option that there will be a Department of Justice which will truly deliver to meet the needs of all our people. I also want to thank those with whom we negotiated in the DUP and Sinn Féin. Some of those talks were not easy, but I believe that as a result of the talks, we have got better. I am fully conscious, Mr Speaker, that I am not the unanimous choice of this Assembly. But I do say to every member of this House, whatever lobbies they may have walked through this afternoon, that we have a duty together to provide leadership. And if we didn't know that before, we sadly had a reminder of it at 12.30 this morning. We have a duty in this Assembly, in the Executive, in its committees, to show that we can provide partnership, we can provide leadership, and we can provide delivery, and ensure that all our people see the benefits of devolution. I pledge myself to that end, Mr Speaker. I trust that others will work with me. Here, here, here. Order, order. There will now be an opportunity for remarks from each of the other political parties. I would ask members to limit their contribution to more, to more than three minutes. And I call Mr Nelson McCodlin. Mr McCodlin. Um, Mr Speaker, I am rise to congratulate David Ford on his uh, appointment today as the Minister for Justice. I look forward to seeing him at the executive meetings and to working with him in that capacity. As a party, we believe that devolution of justice is good for Northern Ireland, but we also believe that it's a position that carries with it certain additional sensitivity. It's not just an ordinary ministerial position, and therefore it was important that whoever was appointed today had cross-community support, and I think that that has been well demonstrated already. Yes, it is argued by some people that it was not done by the De Hunt system, but then we are not wedded to the De Hunt system. There are others who might argue that it is moving away from the Belfast Agreement, but again, that is not something that is going to cause us any difficulty. I think the difficulties have arisen for certain other parties. And I think particularly of the way in which the Ulster Unionist Party argued very strongly that the appointment should be made by the De Hunt system, and therefore that it should go to the SDLP. It was therefore rather strange, having heard that from the Ulster Unionists, to hear the next argument last August from uh, their party leader, who just said, no, to say, many Unionists would be very concerned that our first Justice Minister could be someone who is not pro-Union. So having argued that it should be given to someone who was a nationalist, he then argued against giving it to someone who was a nationalist, and therefore today the Ulster Unionist Party ended up sitting down and not voting when they had the opportunity to vote for the nationalist that they were previously arguing for. Well, if that is unionist leadership, then it's no wonder that they are in the state that they're in today. As regards the position of the SDLP, the point was put forward very forcibly by a number of their folk, but particularly, of course, by their leader in her speech, um, to argue that why would anybody not vote for Alba McGuinness? Well, let me just give you two reasons. One is a very general political one, and the other is a very particular political one. The first is that we could not vote for Alban McGuinness because of the continuing support of the SDLP for an issue that gets right to the heart of policing and justice, and that is the 50-50 recruitment in policing, which is a policy that discriminates against those in the Protestant and Unionist community. And it is that discriminatory approach of the SDLP that is the general political issue. The more particular one was the fact that in my own constituency, when there was a situation in the Torrens estate, where as a result of intimidation and ethnic cleansing, an entire Protestant community were put out of their homes, Alban McGuinness described the vacant houses as a windfall site for nationalists. 
A windfall is something that is good for you. It is something that is not good if it is a case of people being driven out of their homes. And that sort of sectarian comment to say that housing would become available for nationalists because unionists have been driven out, that's the sort of reason why we couldn't vote for Albert McGuinness. Mr. Jerry Adams. Mr. Adams. David Ford agus go mhol iomar ar son Sinn Féin go mhéi an tháil leis. Today a Cian Ciorla was the day we were told would never happen. There was once great opposition from the Unionist parties to this, and that's the age-old lesson of history, never to say never, or never, never, never. And as for the SDLP, the SDLP threw the tail in on pleasing legislation almost 10 years ago in 2001. And they said at that time that it would be impossible to get any other legislation. Now, interestingly enough, these parties which whinged and gurned the loudest about what they call carve-up politics were the most eager to have ministerial <laughs> positions. The Ulster Conservative and Unionist New Force, the Tories, failed to win cross-community support and the SDLP just failed again. Sinn Féin, despite all this, stuck at the hard grind of making progress. We've delivered with our colleagues an increased policing and justice budget and a whole raft of new legislation. The reality is, at Kyoncuria, the North never had acceptable or proper policing. So today is yet another important, proud day in the progress and the necessary steps forward in an ongoing change process. So Sinn Féin is very pleased, as I'm sure the vast majority of citizens out there, Sinn Féin is very pleased with today's progress, and we're determined to keep moving step by step, bit by bit. For the first time since partition, there is a Justice Minister who is accountable to a local elected power-sharing assembly which is representative of the citizens who live here, and that is a good thing. Sinn Féin wished the Minister well. He can be assured of our critical support in what will be a challenging ministerial post. Mr. Ray Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, first of all, I understood the opportunity was to be taken to make some comments about the Justice Minister, but Nelson McCausen chose to turn it into attack on, on, on us. A, a person, incidentally, who has as many positions as there are days in the week, oh, yeah, but never mind about that, we'll move on. The uh, fact is, a decision has been made. My party has had anxieties about, about the timing of this. We regret deeply that no <clears throat> consultation and discussion and agreement was reached in advance as to how we were going to confront the in inevitable challenge that was going to come from renegade IRA elements out there, and sadly, they have left a calling card with us today. I suppose David is going to have to live with the fact that he is no longer leader of the opposition, Mr Speaker, um, and indeed he and his party are now avid supporters of the programme for government, um, which uh, is, 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 to be, is to be, is to be, is to be, uh, is to be welcome. However, the fact is that despite the fact that today's script was written some time ago, nevertheless, uh, decisions have been taken, people are at risk, and in, in the spirit of the comments that uh, David made earlier, uh, we have to move on. The fact is that we still have had no discussions, we have had no agreement on an addition to the programme for government, we have confronting huge challenges in the community. And I think it's incumbent upon all of us, whatever our views might have been on this process, uh, to decide now that we've made our points, we've made them, we feel them genuinely. I hope that some of the things that we have raised can be dealt with and can be resolved. But the one thing we cannot do is continue an argument into the struggle and the challenge that will now confront us, all of us, because these elements that were active in Hollywood earlier today, Mr. Speaker, have not gone away. They're not going to listen, uh, in my opinion, unless they see an absolutely solid wall of confrontation facing them, where all the representatives of the people show their determination 
whatever the differences we have had in the past, to actually face them down and ensure that the people are not subjected and our economy is not subjected to another series of years of destruction. What that happened this morning sent a very clear signal. We are going to be challenged, Mr Speaker, in this House. And I appeal once more for all of the parties to allow proper discussions to take place, to build a consensus as to how this challenge is going to be met. That hasn't yet happened, and I regret that. But I say to uh, David Ford that we will, uh, despite our reservations about all of these matters, we will work with him, and we hope we will get a positive response. Margaret Ritchie. Ms. Ritchie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The SDLP welcomes the fact of a Justice Minister now being in place. We have already recorded our dismay at the denial of nationalist rights in this appointment, and there is no escaping the fact about gerrymandering in this office. Mr Adams earlier referred to things that he thought happened, but th th that his record of the situation is incorrect. There is absolutely no doubt that the SDLP and others did considerable heavy lifting with reference to policing over a period of time when others sat outside and others were engaged in violence. Mr Speaker, the SDLP has a substantive, substantial agenda on justice issues and we will engage constructively with Mr Ford and the new department around that agenda. I call Naomi Law. Mrs Law. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate David Ford on his appointment as the Minister for Police and Justice. I not only want to wish him well um, in all the challenges which await him in that role, but I also want to assure him of my support and that of his party colleagues as he strives to make a real difference in the, in the role that has been given to him today. I know that he will make a constructive contribution um, to moving Northern Ireland forward because that is something that he has consistently done. There has been a lot of talk in the comments to date about how we arrived at this point. Mr Speaker, I want to talk about the road ahead, not the road behind. We have taken a step today, and it's another important step as an Assembly that we are taking together, away from the dark days of the past and towards a better future for everybody. We have been reminded in the early hours of this morning that there are those out there who wish to threaten progress. They do so because they are threatened by progress. We have to demonstrate that politics can work and send a very clear message to those people that no violence will deflect us from the course on which we are set and that such actions are futile. I understand that on a day like this there may be some rancour, but I trust that there is the maturity in this House and in these elected parties around this chamber to put those issues behind us after today and to show that on the fundamental issues, and there is no issue more fundamental than justice, that we have more in common to keep us working together than we have that divides us, and that we want to put the interests of the entire community first. There are serious challenges ahead, and today is just a milestone, albeit a very significant one, on a journey to a better future. It is not the destination. There are challenges that we are going to have to face, both within this House and challenges that are placed on us from outside of it. I believe that we have today moved further down that road and I believe that we will do it again tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that again. No attack, no threat can deflect us from that journey nor should it and I wish David well in everything he does. Don Purvis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, can I congratulate uh, Mr. Ford as the, the new Minister uh, for Justice? Uh, none of us underestimate the challenges that the, the new Minister has to grapple with, not least of all the attempt by dissidents to derail all the political progress we have made. They will not succeed. Policing and criminal justice issues are hugely important and impact on all our lives. Devolution will mean greater transparency and accountability without affecting independence. Hopefully, devolution will mean greater coordination and collaboration between departments, not only to deal with crime in a just and fair manner, 
but to tackle the causes of crime, including poverty and disadvantage. I am quite happy to take on the role of the Leader of the Opposition, and I look forward to working with the Minister and his departmental officials in delivering what is a crucial public service for all the people of Northern Ireland. Dr. Kieran Deeney. Mr. Deeney. I also rise to congratulate Mr. Ford. Uh, I've known David for some years. Uh, I know he's a caring man, uh, he's an intelligent man, and he has the undoubted ability to be a very, a very good and thorough Justice Minister. I also believe his professional background will hold him in good stead for this post. So I, 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 I wish, uh, I, I say again, congratulations, David, and I wish you well in your future post as our Justice Minister. Order members, that concludes the side of business. I would ask the House to take its ease as we move into the next business.